I give you everything you want. Connie Mendez Introduction We assume that you have already read and studied the first book of this series, entitled Metaphysics for Everyone. To understand these New Age teachings well, and to obtain all the benefits they contain, it is advisable to start at the beginning, which is the principle of mentalism. This is because everything in the universe and in creation, is based on this principle, and without knowing it, one walks blindly. Look for it, acquire it, it will not weigh you down. I give you whatever you want. First step, write down on a piece of paper, in order of importance to you, all the things you want, and without fear of asking too much, because the strength that I am going to give you to know, knows no limitation. Second step, read your list when you wake up, and also before you go to sleep. Third step, think often of your desires, enjoy imagining them, and whenever you remember them, you must say, thank you Father, that you have already given the order that they be conferred on me. Fourth step, do not tell anyone what you are doing. This is very important, because if you tell anyone, all the strength dissipates, and you will not see your desires fulfilled. That is all. Now, for your own satisfaction, be splendid with yourself. Don't say on your list that you want a little house, even a tiny one. Ask for the size that suits you and pleases you. If it is money, mention the amount. If it is work, indicate what kind, the salary you aspire to, the conditions, and the most convenient location for you. Start in your first list with simple things, and so you get used to see wonders fall and happen. Since you have never done this before, you will not believe that it is possible, and I warn you that this doubt, may cost you not to see what you have asked for. It is natural for you to have doubts and mistrust, because the idea is new to you. But when you feel skepticism, pessimism, etc., take out your list, read it, and give thanks again. Giving thanks for what you have not yet seen, is the most positive way to manifest faith. Jesus Christ, on several occasions, emphasized this practice, as he notoriously demonstrated, before feeding five thousand people, with five fish and five fishes. When you look up to heaven and give thanks, at the moment of breaking the first loaf of bread, you will treasure that every time you read your list, you will first have to cross out some points, because they will have already been realized. Then, you will have to do it again, putting other points, in the most important places. Don't worry, this is natural, it happens to everyone. What happens is that your higher self will indicate that many of these desires are already within your reach, while there are others that are not so much. Do not judge the way in which they will be given to you, because this is counterproductive. The great spiritual force, is beyond your human understanding. Accept what will be given to you with gratitude, do not interrupt or repress it, and above all, do not think, say, or exclaim upon seeing your desires fulfilled, can it really be because of this? It does not seem possible. If what you thought is that all this, was going to be realized anyway, nothing of the sort. What happens is that the great spiritual force, whose real name is the law of precipitation, is completely impersonal, and places its gifts in the most harmonious, most natural places. Always taking advantage of the channels already established, in your own life. It is not interested in exhibitionism or surprise, it only fulfills its task of giving you what you ask for, where it best suits you. Ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened to you, Matthew 7 verse 7. The reason, why there are several lessons from Emmett Fox in this booklet, is because it has been compiled, to help and get you out of trouble as quickly as possible. And Dr. Fox, my teacher, has been and still is, although his subject is no longer with us, a specialist in the art of getting people out of trouble. The above article, I wrote it so that you can achieve all that you desire, in a minimum of time. This is done to alleviate any condition, that is being unbearable. Dr. Fox says, I have reduced this essay as much as possible, although I would have liked to reduce it to a few lines. It is not an instructive work, 
but a formula to get you out of calamities. Study is all right in its own place and time, but it does not straighten you out of difficulties. It is only the work, of raising and transforming your consciousness of things, that solves a problem for you on the outside. Read often the master key. Do what it indicates, and if you have persistence, you will find yourself mastering every difficulty. The scientific prayer, will get you out of any existing difficulty. It is the master key to harmony and happiness. To all those who do not know the greatest power of the universe, I recommend that you try what I expose here, to obtain the results that God affirmed. God is omnipotent, and man is his image and likeness, with dominion over all things. This says the spiritual doctrine, and it is to be taken seriously. It is not the prerogative of the saint or the mystic, it is for all humans, whoever you are, wherever you are. The master key to harmony, is in your hands now. This implies that scientific prayer, is an act performed by God, and not by you. Your only task is to stand back, and allow God to act through you. You wish to be a simple conduit, hence your imperfections and limitations, do not interfere with the results. No matter what your religion is, God is God. You are His child, and that is enough for Him. Now, for the way to work, when you find yourself in a difficulty, try not to keep thinking about the problem, and think about God. Replace the problem, by thinking about God. It doesn't matter if it is something very big or very small. What really matters, is that you stop thinking about it, and think about God. It doesn't matter what concepts you have about God, whether it is His power, omnipresence, love, wisdom or intelligence. It doesn't matter if you know Him well, rethink it and reflect every time, that the thought of the problem comes up again. Don't get tense, or try to guess what is going to happen, or how God is going to fix it. Leave it to Him, put His hands on it, as we say in metaphysics, and forget it. You have entrusted your problem to the greatest, wisest, most skilled specialist, and you know He will solve it, in perfect harmony for the good of all, and to your entire satisfaction. However, do not get in His way, do not interfere with your human personality. In other words, don't screw up, as we would say colloquially. The right way to pray, the spiritual treatment, is to raise the mind to a consciousness above the level of the problem. If you can raise your thoughts high enough, the problem will solve itself. In fact, that is your only problem, to raise your thinking. The more difficult the problem, which implies that it is more deeply rooted in your subconscious, the higher you must raise your consciousness. A minor annoyance will yield to a small elevation, while a serious problem will require a major elevation. And if it is a great danger or a desperate situation, you will need more spiritual work to deal with it. But that is the only difference. Don't try to solve your problems, mixing your thoughts with the thoughts of others, and trying to compose them that way. It does not work. Raise your consciousness, and God's action will do everything. This means, that you must remember the truth of your being, the truth of God, and the truth of the spiritual plane. That is, you must explore what the conditions are like in spirit, what your higher self is like. It is perfect at this moment, flawless. There is no death, disease, poverty, strife, enmity, war, ugliness, or evil. By visualizing the opposite condition, the one you are observing in the material, that condition becomes the truth. Jesus healed the sick, calmed the storms and raised the dead, because he could raise your consciousness, as far as necessary to do so. To raise your consciousness, you must turn your attention away from the material picture momentarily, and then gently concentrate, on the picture that represents spiritual truth. You can do this by stopping thinking about the problem, reading one of your metaphysical books, reciting affirmations, not like a parrot, but meditating on them. You can also do it by having a conversation, with one of your teachers or fellow advanced disciples. I know people, who have achieved elevation of consciousness, by browsing and rereading parts of the Bible, because the law of attraction will direct you to the Bible, 
where it corresponds to your problem. One man, saved himself in the sinking of a great ocean liner, by repeating, God is love, getting to understand something, of the meaning of this great affirmation. It is also possible to employ all these methods simultaneously, as long as you do not allow tension to take hold of you. No matter how you approach a problem, the essential thing is to transcend the plane of difficulty, and concentrate on God. In business, whether they are sales, contracts or other, are mediations between people, which must be satisfactory to both parties. They are agreements between individuals. Whether you are looking for a job, or looking for a person with certain suitable conditions, it is equivalent, as Dr. Fox says, to seek and find God, on both sides of the problem. That is, both in the person seeking, and in the person offering. God himself is handling the issue. God cannot be divided to antagonize, so there must be a point of harmony, where the two persons meet. God himself, seeks to satisfy himself in each of his children. Do not try to impose your will, affirm that it is the will of God, which is being fulfilled on both sides. Expose your part with all simplicity, forget the habit of expecting that the other is trying to take advantage. Remember that God is also within him, and you will see that he proceeds with complete justice. Neither try to persuade him in an exaggerated manner, nor try to convince him against his will. Remember that if you do not get this sale, job or employee, it simply means that there is something better for you. Don't worry or rush, God is never in a hurry. He works effortlessly on the spiritual plane, and everything comes with great harmony. Do not forget the magic formula, according to the will of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, in harmony for the whole world, under grace and in a perfect way. Thank you Father, that you have already heard me. The powerful verse, the formula to pray correctly, I am divine spirit in God, I live, I move and I have my being. I am already part of God's expression, and I express perfect harmony. I, as an individual, have omniscience. I have direct knowledge of truth, I have perfect intuition, I have spiritual perception. I know that God is my wisdom, so that I cannot err. God is my intelligence, I cannot think otherwise than correctly. There is no waste of time, for God is the only doer. God acts through me, so that I am always acting correctly, and there is no danger of my praying incorrectly. I think the right thing in the right way, at the right time. My work is always well done, because it is God's work. The Holy Spirit is always inspiring me. My thoughts are fresh, new, clear and powerful, in harmony with omnipotence. My prayers are crafted by the Holy Spirit, powerful as the eagle, and gentle as the dove. They go forth in the name of God Himself, and cannot return empty. They will accomplish what pleases me, and prosper in that to which they are directed. I thank God for this. This last thought is from Isaiah 55:11. The following four prayers are recommended by Dr. Emmett Fox. God is love. And he who dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. Love is the most important thing of all, it is the golden door to paradise. Ask for understanding of love, and meditate on it daily. It banishes fear, is the fulfillment of the whole law, covers a multitude of sins, and is absolutely invincible. There is no difficulty, which cannot be overcome through love. There is no disease, which is not cured by enough love. There is no door, which sufficient love will not open, nor abyss, which sufficient love will not bridge. There is no wall that enough love cannot break down, no sin that enough love cannot redeem. No matter how buried the error is, no matter how hopeless the outlook, no matter how big the error, no matter how tangled. If you can love enough, you will be the mightiest and happiest being on earth. The most powerful presence. Affirmative meditation, to achieve the elevation of consciousness. God is the only presence and the only power. God is fully present, here with me now. 
God is the only real presence, everything else is mere shadow. God is the perfect good, God is the cause of only perfect good. God never sends sickness, accident, temptation or death, nor does He authorize these things. God, the good, can cause nothing but good. The same fountain cannot produce sweet and bitter waters. I am the Divine Spirit, I am a child of God, in God I move, live and have my being, so that I do not fear. I am surrounded by the peace of God, and all is well. I do not fear people, I do not fear circumstances, I do not fear myself, for God is with me. The peace of God fills my soul, and fear cannot even touch me. I do not fear the past, I do not fear the present, I do not fear the future, for God is with me. The Eternal Father is my abode, and below are the everlasting arms. Nothing can ever touch me but the direct action of God Himself, and God is love. God is life, I understand this and I express it. God is truth, I understand this and I express it. God is divine love. I send thoughts of love, peace and health to the whole universe, to all trees, plants, and everything that grows, to all animals, birds, to every man, woman and child on earth, without distinction. If anyone has harmed me or done me any wrong, I forgive him voluntarily and completely, now and all matter is over forever. I let go and let them go. I am free and they are free. If there is any resentment left in me, I commit it to my inner Christ, and I am free. God is infinite wisdom, and that wisdom is mine. This wisdom guides and directs me so that I cannot make mistakes. Christ in me is the lamp of my feet. God is infinite life, and that life is my providence and its minister. I can lack nothing, I can lack nothing, for God created me, and He sustains me. Divine love has foreseen everything, has provided everything. One single time, one single power, one single principle, one God, one element, is closer to me than my feet and my hands, than my own breath. I am Divine Spirit, I am the Son of God, and in His presence I live eternally. I thank the Father for perfect harmony. This invocation can be done in combination with the flames, when a student knows them. Treatment to develop divine love. My soul is filled with divine love, and I am surrounded by divine love. I radiate love and peace, to everyone. I am conscious of divine love. God is love, and there is nothing else in creation but God and His expression. All human beings are expressions of divine love, so that I cannot stumble upon anything other than expressions of divine love. All this is the truth now, this is the present state of things. I do not have to strive to make all this happen, I observe it in this moment. Divine love is the nature of being, and there is nothing but divine love in the nature of being. There is nothing but divine love and I know it. I understand perfectly, what divine love is. I have conscious realization of divine love. The love of God burns in me, towards all mankind. I am a focus of God, radiating divine love to everyone I meet, to everyone I think of. I forgive everything, everything that needs my forgiveness, absolutely everything. Divine love fills my heart, and everything is perfect now. I radiate love to the whole universe, without exception to anyone. I experience divine love, I manifest divine love. I thank God for this. The two keys to hell are criticism and resentment, commonly called rancor. These can be permanently destroyed by the above treatment. When the student knows the flames, he can do this treatment by applying the pink flame. Love is not limited to feeling affection for another. Love has many ways of manifesting itself, and one of the greatest is to express the desire to forgive, and to send good to others. To seek to know God is to love Him, to try to purify one's thoughts is to love God, to try to correct unpleasant concepts is to love one's neighbor for whom one feels displeasure. 
To enjoy beauty and art is love, love for God. There is no fear in love, love destroys fear. Fear has torment, for he who fears, has not yet been perfected in love. John 1, 4 18. These are the 15 points, to know if I am really on the path. 1. If I always look for the good in every situation, person and thing. 2. If I resolutely turn my back on the past, whether good or bad, and live only in the present and the future. 3. If I forgive everyone without exception, no matter what they have done, and then forgive myself, wholeheartedly. 4. If I consider my work or daily task, as a sacred thing, trying to fulfill it to the best of my ability, whether I like it or not. 5. If I do everything in my power, to manifest a healthy body, and a harmonious environment in my surroundings. 6. If I try to render service to all others, without doing so in a majestic and fastidious manner. 7. If I take every opportunity to make the truth known to others in a wise and discreet manner. 8. If I staunchly avoid criticism, refusing to listen to it or support it. 9. If I devote at least a quarter of an hour to meditation and prayer. 10. If I read at least seven verses of the Bible, or a chapter of some instructive book, on the truth for this age. 11. If I make a special treatment daily, to ask for or demonstrate understanding. 12. If I train myself to give my first thought to God, after waking up. 13. If I utter the verb for the whole world every day, either in our daily exercises, or especially at 12 o'clock in the day. 14. If I practice the golden rule of Jesus, instead of merely admiring it. He said, Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The important thing about the golden rule is that we should practice it, even if others do not practice it towards us. But there is also a rule that does not have its opposite, so that you do not allow others to do to you what you would be unable to do to them. 15. If I fully realize that what I see is nothing but a mirage, it is possible to transform it by means of scientific prayer in order to demonstrate harmony and perfection in everything in your life. Ask yourself once a week if you are fulfilling all these points. My world contains everything. How many times have you found yourself missing something to continue what you are doing? If you are dressing, are you missing a pin or a needle and thread? If you are at work, are you missing a pen or some other instrument? You are seeing a material appearance, nothing more. The truth is always in the spirit, as you well know. When you think and look for the correspondence in the spiritual, that is, when you think how the situation is on the spiritual plane, Timendi always tells you that it is perfect, so meditate. What would be perfection in this case? Perfection, in the case that you are getting dressed, and you are missing a pin or a needle with thread, would be that you have at that moment what you are missing, or that you have no need of those items. Right? Well, you have already seen that your body is made of the substances of the plane, that the habitat contains all the elements that can be found in all other objects, items, etc., that are on the planet. In addition, you have been accumulating in all your past lives, everything you may need and use, each experience with all the necessary accessories, to see it fulfilled and overcome. They are already in your etheric body as memory, and in your causal body, as constructive assets. You have then full authority to declare, my world contains everything, and it is not possible that at any time it should lack anything. Spiritually, what I need is with me, and I claim it in material appearance, because I lack it for my matter at this moment. You will see a small miracle, if you have understood well the principle I have explained to you. You will find a pin or a needle with thread, almost without looking for them. Or it will come to your mind immediately, the thing that can make up for the lack, in the case that one of you asks me the question that others have asked, what would happen if I were in a desert and I lacked water, for example, and I could not find it? I answer that once you know this law, this principle, 
and you apply it two or three times, there will never again be a case in your existence in which you will lack absolutely nothing of what you may need. This case of the desert without water is karmic, it is an experience that was necessary at a given moment. But you are already learning such advanced spiritual laws as these, you have already passed the experience of the desert, you have overcome it, and the case will never happen again. The step taken has been overcome, and there is no need to take it again. The cuckoo, it is something you know, isn't it? In Venezuela, the cuckoo is the monster they scare the children with, in order to make them behave well. Dr. Fox says, this article is for people who have a concern. I never scold anyone who is worried, because that is tantamount to kicking the fallen one. Does a person worry because it amuses them? Of course not. There are people, who take pleasure in acting in that whiny manner. That is a condition that needs urgent attention, but it is not a case of worry. Worry is a hell, from which the victim feels great relief, at the slightest sign of escape, and you can actually avoid worry. It depends on whether or not you understand the truth of being. If you do understand it, the answer is yes. Consider the following, that which you do not believe in has no power to bother or worry you. The boogeyman of your childhood no longer scares or deceives you, because you no longer believe in it. But when you were three years old, it had the power to make your heart race, to make your cheeks turn white, to make your knees tremble, to make you throw up all your food. To make you vomit up all the food in your stomach, which under special conditions, could have killed you. However, today it doesn't even make you blink, because you don't believe in it anymore. That's all, nothing has really changed. There is no such boogeyman, nor has there ever been. The only difference lies in yourself, you have changed your way of thinking, you discovered that it was a falsehood, and you are free now. Exactly the same is true of any other form of evil that is manifesting in your experience, for all evil is a boogeyman, and nothing else. It is happening to you because you believe in it, and it will vanish the moment you stop believing in it. The only life that keeps it alive, is given to it by you, with your belief in it. Any situation, and even any material object, can be changed by spiritual treatment, or what we call, scientific prayer. No matter what is going to happen tomorrow, something very different will happen because of scientific prayer. A dislocated ankle, the consequences of having stained a suit with ink, the court trial that happened last week, the operation you are going to have next week, and all the consequences that may arise therefrom. Everything can be totally erased from everyone's consciousness, or the character of all these things can be changed to make them appear to be blessings to all concerned. Sometimes it happens that you buy an article, and when you get home, you realize that it was not what was right for you, and you think it is too late. No matter, treat the case scientifically, and you will see that after all, the purchase was correct, and you will rejoice with the acquisition. Or in some other way, you will have satisfaction for having bought it, as everything becomes good, by treating it by scientific prayer. All this is the truth, so this proves that the material plane is not real, in the sense of being fixed or permanent, and once we grasp this truth, it no longer has power to bother us. The truth is that our material conditions are nothing but the outward reflection of the convictions we hold in our minds. And since we have the power to change these convictions, it is evident that we can change the outer reflections as well. Your problem at this moment is exactly like the boogeyman of your childhood. It is the boogeyman, and the only power it has is the power you are giving it by believing in it. And the way to do that, is to pray enough scientifically, or get someone to help you. You will see that unhappy picture transform into something totally different, or disappear completely. With enough prayer, you can get it erased from your memory. But that won't be necessary, because you won't want to forget the boogeyman. It doesn't matter, you see, because it is possible to remove the worry, when you can say to yourself. Yes at this moment this seems like a calamity, although I know that with a good treatment, I can change this situation into something totally different. You can already say, 
that worries end for you, and it is only a matter of time for health, harmony and prosperity, to be permanent in your life. Says the Bible, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the right thinker enters it, and is safe. Master Fillmore, founder of Unity, says, it is no crime to be rich, and there is no virtue in being poor, as the reformers have led us to believe. The evil consists in hoarding money, preventing it from circulating freely, and reaching him who needs it. Those who put their wealth to work, in such a way as to contribute to the welfare of the masses, are instrumental in the salvation of this country. If everyone had, what we call the consciousness of poverty, misery would be general, as it is in India and China.